So yesterday we were looking at uh, yesterday we were looking at a, d -d 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 uh, inequalities. We were looking at solving polynomial inequalities, and we were using those more specifically to figure out when a polynomial is positive or negative. We did that using a sign chart. So, um, uh, now today, I know that very often we do, um, uh, I know that usually we do, uh, what's it, uh, weekly reviews on Fridays? And we're not particularly behind, but I will be gone on Monday and Tuesday, as I've told you guys before. And with that, and so I'll put review stuff, yeah, review stuff on Monday and Tuesday. Let's see. This is the la I think this is the last lesson of the chapter. So, uh, so I might, I might have you do a quiz on one of those days. Still haven't quite decided. I'll. I'll put your I'll uh, send an announcement in Canvas that tells you everybody what they're doing. All right. So anyway, we can go ahead and get started. All right. So yesterday, yesterday we worked on solving polynomial inequalities, and we did so with a uh, sign chart. Today we're going to uh, we're going to uh, Pick it up a notch, and we're going to be looking at rational inequalities. Our objective. that students will be able <sighs> when a rational function Is positive or negative? And today's the fifth of May. Not May, March. Fifth of March. How long did I ever sleep? All right. Take a moment. Get the title and objective copied down. All right, so
let's consider, let, before we talk about ra rational inequalities, let's talk about polynomial inequalities, what we worked with yesterday. Now, polynomials Hmm. Polynomials can have a positive negative or zero value. for any particular input. And you can't go from negative to positive or from positive to negative without crossing zero, right? This is why We were able to make the sign charts. Dividing up the x-axis into positive and negative regions. Ordered by zero. And we were able to do that because we knew that the places were, we knew that the zeros were, were the only places we, where the function could go from positive to negative. So I could divide it up, use the zeros as like borders and divide up the function into positive, negative, positive regions or whatever. The real question is, can we do the same for rationals? And the answer is no. But sort of yes. Okay. Ah, okay. Now, rational functions behave similarly. But they can be positive. negative, zero, or undefined. So we can't just divide up, the, divide up into the region into positive and negative zones bordered by zeros because there's this additional type of output, undefined, no output at all.
All right. Okay, now, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? I screenshotted it, you're good. Okay, Lindsay, you good? Your mic's on, Lindsay. Okay, no yelling? Remember that whenever you want me to bring them back, I can bring them back. Okay. I know there's a lot of text. You know what, actually, so actually, I, before we take this away, let's go ahead and run over to Desmos and show and look at this more visually. So let's say we have a polynomial, like f of x equals x squared minus 3 times x plus 7 times x minus 1 squared. So for example, looking at this function, whoa, a little bit really Oops. Okay. So for example, you know what? Let's take off this. Okay, yeah. So let's consider this function, for example. So we see that our we see that our function touches the x-axis here, here, and here. So that means that we can divide it up into four zones. This zone to the left of this zero. This zone between these two zeros, this zone between these two zeros, and this zone to the right of this. We divide it up into, th into four areas. And then to determine if they're positive or negative, we can plug in a number from each of those zones to divide it up into a positive, negative, negative, and positive zones. But what about rational functions? What if I'm dividing that by, let's say, I'm going to say x minus 3. Minus 3 times x minus 3. So now, Look at this. Here, we can divide our function into a positive zone, a negative zone. Then there's a, if you look very carefully, there's another tiny little negative zone in here. And then another positive zone. But without crossing the x axis, we actually flip down to another negative zone, which means that we need which means that we need another type of boundary. For that matter, there's another positive zone way up here. So if we wanted to make a sign chart, we would need to have space for both. We would need to have our boundaries be not just zeros, but also 
the vertical asymptotes. The places where our function is undefined. Because those are also places where it's possible to assign a change. Here we went from a negative zone. Whoa, come on. Come on, there we go. And from a negative to a positive zone without actually crossing the x-axis. All right, back to notes. Just attendance really good. Zubity, zubity. All right. Okay. So let's create a sign chart for a rational function. Hmm. All right, so let's let r of x be equal to 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 3 x minus 1. Let's create a, create a sign chart. and determine the intervals for r of x is positive or negative. All right, so here's the key. So we'll make our sign chart. We want to divide this sign chart into into different zones, yeah? But whereas with a polynomial, it was divided up into zones along the zeros, this is going to be divided into zones along what we'll call potential sign chains. All right. So. So R of X's sign could potentially change with 
statements value is zero or undefined. Now this is actually pretty pretty straightforward. It's zero when the top is zero and it's undefined when the bottom is zero. So we're, we're looking for the zeros of both the numerator and denominator. All right. Well, let's start let's start with the uh, denominator here. So what can I plug into X to make this bubble become zero? Mm -hmm, that's correct, negative three. So that means that we have one potential sign chain at negative three. What about this bubble? Where could, where would this change sign? Or not change sign, where would this, where would this be zero? When X is what? One, okay, so that's two. That's two zones. Okay, what about the numerator? What do I need to plug into this to make it become zero? We have 2x plus 1, and we need to be 0. So, we get some, so let's balance this equation here. Uh, negative 1 for both sides, 2x equals negative 1. Divide by 2, we get x equals negative half. So, this guy, or so these are all three potential sign faces. Those are all places where our sign could change. So that divided us into four zones that we need to find signs for. Okay. So now we just plug in numbers that are easy to work with and figure out whether each zone is positive or negative. And to be clear, this is a potential sign, sign change because this is where our function is undefined. This is a potential sign change because this is where our function equals zero. This is a potential sign change because our, it's a place where our function is undefined. Okay, so let's work in this zone. So uh, someone give me a number that's less than negative three that's easy to work with. Negative, so, you, so uh, in the chat you say negative one. Negative one is greater than negative three. Negative one would be in this zone here. We could do negative four. Okay. So now we can plug negative four into each of these factors, into each of these sections, and we'll see if it's positive or negative. If I plug negative four into this, will I get something positive or negative? Negative eight plus one, that's negative. 
when I plug negative 4 into this, negative 4 plus 3, that's negative 1, that's negative. And negative 4 minus 1, that's negative 5, so that's negative 2. Or it is negative as well, not negative 2. Okay, so, we in, so a negative times a negative is a positive. And a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So this is a negative zone. Or a negative interval. And it's going from negative infinity all the way up to negative three. What about this zone? Well, someone give me a number that's in between negative 3 and negative 1. That's easy to work with. Give me a number in this. Negative 2. Now we'll plug negative 2 into here, and we'll see what sign we get. 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4, plus 1 is a negative. Okay, negative 2 plus 3, that's 1. That's a positive number. Negative 2 minus 1, that's negative 3. That's a negative number. So this whole thing here, will this give us a positive or negative number? This is actually going to give us a positive. A positive times, like if you look at the denominator, a positive times a negative is negative, but a negative divided by a negative is a positive. This is going to be a positive interval. Make sense? And that interval is going from negative 3 to negative half. Okay, what about this section? Uh, give me a number between negative 1 half and 1. That's easy to work with. Zero, zero's in there, zero's real easy to work with. Zero plus one is positive. Zero plus three is positive. Zero minus one is negative. All right, so will this section be positive or negative? Mm -hmm. A positive times a negative is negative. A positive divided by a negative is negative. So this is going to be a negative interval. And we're going from a negative half to a one. And finally, for here, Give me a number greater than one that's easy to work with. Two. So we'll plug those that into each section here. Two times two is four plus five is a positive, or plus one is a positive number. Two plus three, that's positive. Two minus one, that's positive. So will this be a positive or a negative interval? Positive or a negative there? It will indeed be a positive. And we're going here from one all the way.
All right. So does anyone have any questions about how we made the sign chart here? Okay, because now we can actually let's finish this problem here. We create our sign chart. Now we need to determine the intervals where the function is positive or negative. So it looks like it's positive from negative three to negative one half and from one to infinity. It's positive from negative three to negative half and one to R of X is negative. In the intervals, negative infinity to negative three. And negative half to one. Now, one last thing. When we talk about these intervals, sometimes instead of, the, instead of writing out the word and, A loss also we can also use the union symbol which looks like a big white U instead of the this big fancy this big wide u that you sometimes see that just mean that just is just means the word and when talking about intervals looking at this section and All right. Whew. <laughs> it's a lot of text. All right. Ugh, I'm sleepy suddenly. Ugh. I slept on last night. Just I'm sleepy. All right. So I know that this is a whole lot of stuff written down here, but does everybody have this down? Or will anyone yell at me if I take this away?
Okay. Now, you can also use graphing to, so yesterday we learned a method for you for uh, solving a rational equation, for that. For solving a polynomial inequality by graphing than just looking where it's positive or negative, you can do that with rationals. No changes to that method. So I won't go over that again. If you want to see how we can do that, you've just watched yesterday's lesson again. You would use the exact same method when working with a rational. Just get everything onto one side so that you have stuff equals zero, graph the stuff, see where it's positive. All right. So, but there is one thing about rational functions that we do need to think about. And that is sometimes rational functions will have multiple terms, each with their own denominators. And when that happens, that makes life a little bit more difficult. So, let's solve a rational inequality. by combining fractions. <laughs> so let's solve five over x plus three plus three over x minus one is less than zero. So we want to know so what we're what are we asking? We're asking you us to solve this inequality. We're asking what are the values of x that would make that would give make this left side be less than zero? Well, you know, a very large negative number, like negative 20 billion, that would definitely give us a negative on both of these denominators. So that would combine them, we would get something negative. But it's hard to tell where it stop, goes from being positive, or it goes from being negative back to positive. So we're not sure where it would stop, or if it would become negative again later down the line. Like, Consider this problem here. We were able to divide it up nicely into positive, negative and positive zones because this is all one big fraction. If either one of these bubbles is zero, then that means that that whole denominator is undefined, or denominator is undefined, so that's not a problem. And when the new, especially when the numerator is zero, that is another bound. But for this one, it's not very clear when this is going to equal zero. We, it would need to equal zero where these two equations like cancel each other out. Or this is so, and it's not clear when that's going to happen. But if we combine these into one fraction, it will become clear. Or it will, if we can combine these into one fraction, that's going to be a lot easier. So, uh, can I add these fractions together right now? Can I combine them into one fraction? Well, no, because they don't have common denominators. Like, say I had, I don't know, 5 thirds plus three over negative one. I couldn't combine these together because they don't have common denominators. 
So we'll bet we better give these common denominators. Now, if I have something like three sevenths plus uh, five fourths, I can give them common denominators by multiplying the top and bottom by the opposite denominator. So we'll do the same thing here. Multiply top and bottom here by x minus 1, and we get x minus 1 times 5 all over x minus 1 times x plus 3. Multiply top and bottom here by x plus 3, and we get 3 times x plus 3 all over x plus 3, or x minus 1, x plus 3, is less than 0. All right, so now they have common denominators, which means I can add them together. This plus that is this plus that. So I'll combine them into one fraction here. Well, and now we should be able to simplify this numerator here. Uh, distribute the 5 in there. Distribute the 3 in there. And we'll have 5x minus 5 plus 3x plus 9 all over the same denominator. Five x plus three x is eight x. Negative five plus nine is four. There we go. Okay. Now this can. These are both multiples of two, so I can actually divide both sides by 2, or multiply, multiply by a half on both sides. This step will simplify to 4x plus 2 all over x minus 1, x plus 3. And 0 times that times a half is 0. That's one of the reasons why we like making the right side zero, because then it makes it really easy to simplify. Multiply both sides by anything you want, and the right side will still be zero. All right. And now, and now we can go ahead and make our uh, sign chart. Wait, for that matter, oh wait, these are both divisible by four, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So this is actually 2x plus 1. All right. Now anyway, now we make a sign chart to determine positive and negative intervals. Which means, yeah, I know, we're barely halfway done. But I have some good news. 2x plus 1 over x minus 1x plus 3. We already did this problem. This was just a really horrible and ugly way of writing this. This is so much easier to work with. So we actually already made the sign chart for this. Here.
to where the intervals where this is negative. Or, well, and for this, we want to know when our function is negative, when this stuff will give us an output less than zero. So from the sign chart we already made for this function, that's going to be from negative eight to negative three and from negative one half to one. So from the sign chart, which again, we already made, So from negative infinity to negative three and negative one half to one. So this symbol, remember I taught referred to this a minute ago, this is called the union symbol. And it's just another way of saying and. So our function is negative from here to here, from negative infinity to negative three and from negative half to one. Fair enough. Oh, how is it? Someone asked, asked in the private chat, how is it determined that these are the solution? So what is this asking? Well, this is asking, when is our function less than zero? When is our function less than zero? So the solution is asking, uh, yeah, the solution is asking, when is this stuff less than zero? So, well, we already made the sign chart and we determined that our function is negative it, from negative eight, or negative infinity to negative three and from negative half to one, right? Those are places where our function is negative. Well, being less than zero is what it means to be negative. So saying it's negative could also equally have been said is less than zero. Great question though. Okay, I think that that is where we can leave off the lesson for today. Ugh. Ugh. <sighs> All right, so now sign charts are useful for more than just polynomials and rational. So you can make a sign chart for any type of function. And they're actually really useful in calculus because uh, it's very useful in calculus to determine zones in which a particular function is positive or negative. It's used when determining uh, concavity, which tells us whether a function is curving downward or curving upwards, which is, which is something that's very useful to know. Uh, it's used in a process called optimization, which is a very important application of calculus. So, uh, the, so this, if you go on to a calculus class, this likely won't be the last time you see it. All right. But I think with that, we can go ahead and leave off for the day. So today we learned how to determine when a function is positive or negative which is equivalent to, to uh, solving a, ration, a uh, rational space. They're both. Uh, we saw that we need, that we can make a sign chart for a rational function by 
taking the x-axis and dividing it into positive and negative regions bordered by zeros of the numerator and zeros of the denominator. We saw that we can, and we saw that uh, when our rational equation is a sum of fractions, then we can combine them all into one fraction by giving them common denominators to rewrite it into something that's easier to make a sign. Now, uh, as previously mentioned, I will not be here on Monday or Tuesday. I will still have work for you. I'll send out an announcement in Canvas um, uh, with your instructions once I make up those assignments. I'll probably send that out. On so uh, just sometime, So just when you get up on Monday morning, just log into Canvas and I'll tell you what I want you to do. It will likely be a review. Now, one other thing, uh, we have training this afternoon from two o'clock to four o'clock. And I, in, and I will probably be working with stu with uh, students doing other with other students one two. So I don't think we'll have much time to do things in asynchronous. But if you want to come in from one to two, you're welcome. You're welcome to drop. But from two to four, I'll definitely be here. All right. So you guys have a great day. I will see you on Wednesday. Bye bye. We'll see you, Leroux. Have a good day. Have a good week.